Hey, what's up? Snail, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by Aaron in New Jersey, aka Krang. Thank you so much because adding to my Celtic Frost collection, which is the Monotheus cassette to Mega Theron double LP, but he was nice enough to send over one of his extra copies of Morbid Tales. Oh yeah. You know I was stoked when I got that DM. But well, we're going to be blasting Hellhammer, Apocalyptic Raids, 1990. I don't know why they changed the cover, but to me, why would you change such a classic cover? But it's the version I have. I just wanted to show you how glorious this is. And if you have any of the Celtic Frost reissues, you know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to Morbid Tales, oh my goodness. You're talking about one of my favorite releases of all time. I had no idea this was going to be on red vinyl until I read the hype sticker. It came in shrink wrap. I had to give it its own... Uh, sleeve and everything but like there's two posters in here a booklet and also another LP which I'll go over in a moment but like and I'm not just talking you know a few flyers and stuff you get lyrics as well it's everything you could possibly want. This is the 2017 Morbid Tales reissue. <gasps> Classic. But, like, you get, uh, rehearsals. I don't want to spoil, like, I legit don't, do not want to spoil this whole thing for you folks. I'm just going to show certain photos. It's just, just, to me, these reissues, I know they're a little expensive, but to me, they're it's worth every penny at the end of the day. So, we get a human intro. Into the Crypts of Rays, Visions of Morality, Dethroned Emperor, Morbid Tales, Procreation of the Wicked, Return to the Eve, Dance Macabre, Nocturnal Fear, The Bonus Tracks, Morbid Tales, Autumn 1984 Rehearsal, Messiah Summer 1984 Rehearsal, and Side 4, you get an Autumn 84 Rehearsal of Procreation of the Wicked, and Nocturnal Fear. And there's an autograph card from 84. Oh, no, no. Depicting the band's short-lived first lineup. I apologize. But this type of stuff is, like, hell yeah. I, I love it. Like, just, like, reading, like, the description from, like, Prowling death promotion and management, you know, a proper biography will be released with the mini LP. It's just badass and stuff. If you're a fan, especially of the history of extreme music, then you know how important Celtic Frost Morbid Tales is. And here's poster number one. 
I'll be adding one of these posters to the November prize pack, by the way, on the Patreon. But morbid tales, seriously, I don't know where to begin when it goes, when it comes down to just how good this album, well, this EP, I mean, really is. Like, for the longest time, I never could make, and I still honestly can't make up my mind, like, what is my actual favorite Celtic Frost record, and I know if I told you Monotheist, a lot of you are going to be like, shut up, you're just saying that, but no, like, as much as I love these two, you know, recordings, and again, like, just a great reissue, um, this is on black vinyl, 2017 reissue, But, like, I, I was so stoked when I got this, like, but I've been after Morbid Tales on vinyl for a minute, could never find it at a reasonable price, and finally get to hear that Tom Warrior <clears throat> on 12 inches of wax via Morbid Tales. Now, obviously, it's on to Megatheron, but Morbid Tales, to me, is, like, I mean, just wow. Like, some of my favorite riffs of all time, but I could say the same about to Megatheron as well. It's just, like, when it comes to EPs, mini LPs, this is honestly one of the best ever. It's the classic for a reason. I'm just gonna flip this real quick. But Hellhammer, Apocalyptic Rage. Oh yeah, second poster. So stoked. And again, the booklet really gives you like an exhaustive you know, description about how everything came to be. Great reissue. How many people do you think have that tattoo? Like, seriously. But real quick, just gonna throw this on because why not but yeah I just wanted to throw some hellhammer on also just listen to Celtic Frost I mean there's a couple records that obviously you could skip And some people even tell you the last record's the worst. It, it's totally not. It's just its own thing. It's doomy. I, I love it. I, I, I can't be more straightforward. I, like, legit love it. Oh, but let me read you the hype sticker. Oh, my knees. But to me, a perfect example of not changing original artwork is this. Come on, what the hell? <laughs> I just remember when I first saw that, I was like, huh, like, okay. 
And like all it says is uh produced by Tom G. Warrior, Martin E. Ian, and it gives you the rest of the information and stuff. The cover design was by Martin. I mean, rest in power. But still, the original. You all, you all know what it is. But really quickly, uh, the it, the original classic. I don't know why it says album. The original classic album remastered on two X red vinyl. Uh, do they consider this an album? I mean, I always thought it was a mini LP, but I don't, I, I don't know. I actually never really thought about it like that, because I always thought about it as like an EP, huh? See, now I'm like second guessing myself. Like, wait a minute, like. Oh man. But the concept and art direction by Tom Gabriel Warrior, two posters, 32 10 inch booklet with extended uh, sleeve notes. But the original classic album remastered on double red vinyl. I mean, I, I swore this was a mini LP. I swore. For like my whole life. If I was wrong, I am an idiot. Yeah. This mini LP is dedicated. See, I, I knew it. Alright. So the hype sticker was wrong. I was going to say, I was like, wait, I know it's not like technically an album. It's like a mini, a mini LP. That album credits and everything. Uh. Yeah, you had Stephen uh, Priestley, session drummer. Uh, Martin Eric Ian, bass additional vocals, bass effects, and Tom G. Warrior. Voice, guitars, special effects, grunts. It, it's, I made the grunts part up, but it's badass. Uh, just having this in my hands right now, like, I'm just stoked. But I'm trying to see who uh, remastered everything. And uh, all tracks remastered by V. Santora and Tom G. Warrior at uh, Woodshed Studio, Landshut, Germany, March 2016. So, look what's finally getting off of the, the turntable. Because what a filthy mini LP, one of my favorite releases of 2023 with a bullet is the Torso Freak mini LP. Honestly, like, some of my favorite recordings this year are not full length. Like, I think, honestly, the Stench demo is better than about 75% of the death metal that was released this year. I'm not trying to be like a, a dick either, and like even like certain splits. Like when it comes to full lengths, there's a couple that, but like they're not death metal. Like I've been trying to think, like ooh, like there's not really that that many that really knocked my socks off. Let me see if you have, if you have to now I know it's a fancy reissue, but do we have to guess the RPMs? Like, I would think this would be forty five RPMs, but I I bet it's thirty three. Let's try and we'll find out. This is we'll try thirty three. Yep, pretty sure I was right. We'll find out in a sec.
Well, I can kind of tell from the, the intro. Yeah, 33 RPMs. Sick. Very, very stoked, man. Uh, you have no idea. I've really, like, been hunting for this thing for a minute. Yes! Like, sheer terror would not exist without Celtic Frost. They pumped death. Fuck yeah. I think it's just a lot of like Napalm Death breakdowns or just Celtic Frost Ritz. Obituary. Oh. When I listen to this, it like, it boggles my mind. Like, wow. This rips upon rips. Oh shit. Like, this is technically almost. So good. I, I, I love Celtic Frog. But you'll, you'll hear what I'm talking about in a moment. They pop that. Just speed it up. I love it. I, 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 I fucking love it. It never gets old either. Ooh. Ooh. I have been wanting to go over this record with you maniacs for years, and thanks to Aaron, killer viewer mail right here, Celtic Frost, Morbid Tales, BMG, and Noise uh, Productions, Noise Records, hell yeah, like this is again such... In my opinion, I wish all reissues had this much tender love and care. But at the same time, like sometimes all you just need are some like legit underground as hell, disgusting, awesome tunes. Just throw in a few flyers. Let you know that, yeah, this band was on their way to, you know, making moves and something might have happened. They might have changed their sound. Like, I love, like, labels like Extremely Rotten, Dark Descent, and The Crypt when they do their reissues. Because, like, like, especially the recent, like, Morpheus Descends reissues, they're just amazing quality and I just think it's awesome any labels that just go the extra mile with reissues and don't treat them as just money grabs like for example like the afterbirth extremely rotten reissue for the demo they got the new art from Mark Riddick and like, I have the t-shirt, because I love it. It's great. 
and psychopathic embryo embryotherapy ah, is just one of those demos that's just one of the best ever. And again, grotesque infection, obscurity, like I am beyond stoked with and like this isn't even all of it, but like when it comes to reissues, I love Extremely Rotten. And I love when just, like, labels randomly will do, like, a badass tape reissue. But here, this is the real deal. This is fancy, heavy, and along with, like, nuclear... I, this is up there with, like, nuclear war now. Reissues, like, quality. Like, real quick, let me just compare this to... Uh, the Oath of Black Blood reissue. First off, just insane how much tender, again, just love and care went into this. And this is all like heavy duty material. It's just, well, that, that, that's a little, that's a smooth. This is the, uh, but like, so nice. Like, that, that had to have cost so much money. And then the, you have the booklet, which I'm pretty sure is, like, 42 pages. I, I honestly forget. You get zine interviews. You get everything you could possibly want. When it comes to this recording, like, YK legit did, like, just nailed it. So much cool, sh like this, and like it's the reason I'm getting rid of my other copy of Drawing Down the Moon because, like, these Nuclear War Now reissues they really, you know, went above and beyond the Call of Duty. And I purposely got the picture disc for both releases so I could give the channel. My, uh, Cavalt Records copy. I know it's, I, I say cult, but it's, like, actually, like, the initials Cavalt. A K-V-L-T. I just always still say cult. I don't care if I'm wrong, but it's just a great picture disc. It sounds great. It doesn't just belong on your wall. I would never buy this beautiful set just to hang this on my wall. I mean, if if you're into that, if you're into picture disc collecting like that, you, you just have to have money, like legit, like that's it. I just I would never hang this up. Like I just wouldn't, unless again, like I had like two copies. But then I'm, like, left with, you know, I mean, I'm sure I could, like, give the booklet to a friend or somebody that loves Beharit. But just a great reissue. And, like, comparing, you know, what Nuclear War Now can do with what Noise Records did here. Like, they're both just great in their own way. And, you know, this does not need to be a double LP. And they didn't make it one. And that's awesome. Like, they just, you know, made a badass picture disc for something that was in demand. And that's what boggles my mind sometimes. Like, I understand reissues cost money. Depending on the band, like, is it going to sell? You know, like, that that's a gnarly, like, leap. Like, it's just, it's legit. Like, you, you don't know at the end of the day. So you're kind of just taking, like... All right, like hopefully this sells, and then you just jump in, and you better hope that you know your shit sells, or you're gonna be kicking yourself in the ass. Like, why'd I do that? Like again, they just absolutely 
did such a good job with the drawing down the moon reissue that I just was, again, I, it's gorgeous, but here, I can't believe how good this sounds, like hearing these songs on vinyl, like, like it's amazing, because just hearing Into the Crypts of Rays on vinyl, like, just legitimately made my day. Dethroned Emperor, like, fuck. Banger shit right here. Total Poser Disposer, and also, E Goddamn Central, I feel legitimately embarrassed. To just be going over Celtic Frost, Morbid Tales of You Maniacs. Because this is, like, seriously, like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I did, like, a very long video when I went over uh, to Mega Theorong. Because there was so much, you know, gnarly stuff to go over. And it was such a big deal. But, like, those two recordings, in my opinion, are probably two of the most important just when it comes to, you know, extreme music. How many bands have ripped off Celtic Frost? It is ridiculous. If they could get, like, residuals on, like, how many times their riffs were used... Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine. Some bands owe their entire careers to Hellhammer and Celtic Frost. And I think that's awesome. But at the end of the day, you always will have that argument. What do you like better? Apocalyptic Raids? Or Morbid Tales? That's up to you. See, to me, that's up to you. You make up your mind. Like, I, I don't care at the end of the day. I'm not going to call you a poser. It's your fucking opinion. However you feel about it. If you like it, you like it. But I know, like, in the comments... If you made it this far, seriously, in the comments, I want to know what do you, what do you honestly, like honestly, like don't try and look, don't do it to be cool. I want to really know. Morbid Tales by Celtic Frost, or Hellhammer Apocalyptic Raids. Like, if you had to pick, and like legitimately, you can only listen to one of these records again. That's the rule. What would it be? Because, like, it's legit, like, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna go with Morbid Tales because I'm just so stoked right now <laughs> to have this again, but, like, a pot, like, Hellhammer is Hellhammer, but, like, Celtic Frost is Celtic Frost, so, I mean, it is what it is, and, like, I think they're doing that, like, uh, Triumph of Death, Death tour thing. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't really look into it. But all I know is great reissue here. Uh, red vinyl. Um, I think Aaron got this from Amazon. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. But, uh, red vinyl. Like, there's a write-up on the back here by Xavier Russell. Morbid Tales. Personal View. And then the lyrics, like, that's awesome. The Black Sabbath theme continues on Dethroned Emperor. It's dark as fuck, yet very hypnotic at the same time. I love the doomy middle set. See, that's bad. That's the stuff that, like, to me, like, getting these types of reissues is worth it just to read those stories. And, like, stuff like that. But... Red Vinyl, just a really banger of a reissue. Great job, honestly, to uh, 
everybody involved in this one. Uh, most I'm get, It seems like it's mostly Tom Warrior. I mean, his name's on pretty much everything in here, and yeah, you know, I, I get it. But definitely one of my favorite reissues. Thank you, Aaron. And again, this is essential extreme metal. Do not ever sleep on morbid tales. Like seriously, as soon as you hear this, you're gonna be like, "Oh, like this rules." If you never heard it before for some unknown reason, like if you are brand new to the genre, welcome and. Enjoy Celtic Frost and your journey with extreme music. Thanks for watching the Vital Vinyl Vlog. As always, I'm going to get back to listening to Celtic Frost. Because why not? It's cold as hell out and my feet hurt. Thanks for watching. As always, you fucking rule. Tails. 10 out of 10.